Hey, in this video, you're going to discover secrets of highly converting Amazon listing. That's a listing that gets you more sales on Amazon. And today I'm accompanied by Emma Shermer Tamir, who's the co-owner of Marketing by Emma, which is a firm that creates Amazon listings and helps Amazon sellers get more sales with great copy and highly converting copy. And yeah, Emma is here today with us to share her wisdom and help you. So Emma, please introduce yourself to us. Excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Boba. I'm really excited to be here. As Boba mentioned, I am the co-owner of Marketing by Emma, and we help e-commerce businesses really connect with their target customers to excite them and get them not just eager to make that initial purchase, but to really become long-term fans and customers so that they want to buy everything that you're selling. So that's creating how you convert listings with copy. You specialize specifically in copy for pictures as well. You do copy on pictures and also copy for title, bullet description, A plus content, which we're going to be discussing today. And Emma, could you tell us a few words about yourself? Like uh, maybe, yeah, that's going to be interesting for sure. the viewers, I think. Yeah. So I'm located in Missouri, which I don't know how any how familiar any of you are with the geography of where Obviously. that is but if you uh -huh. close your eyes and imagine the united states and then point to the middle you'll probably get pretty close to where we are um, right. <laughs> so my husband is my business partner and we've been doing this since 2016 and it's just been an incredible journey to be able to work with businesses from all over the world and to see their successes and to learn about all the awesome products that people are creating and it's definitely never boring. Yeah, so as we talked before, we connected in 2017, July, so that makes it three years now and a few weeks. So it was nice to see your growth from uh, then, which you were already doing some awesome stuff to today where it's grown even bigger and I wish you even more <laughs> success and you know, growth, it's fun. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, I feel the, the same way about you. It's so crazy how quickly time flies. You know, yeah. we're filming this right now during the pandemic. And I've heard so many people complain about how slowly time is moving. And I feel like I'm busier than I've ever been. And it's time is moving at an insanely quick pace because you know, we just have all of this time where we used to be traveling and going to conferences and different business trips all the time. And now we just have this really solid chunk of time that's uninterrupted to do some things that we've been talking about doing for a long time that we finally have an opportunity to get around to doing. Yeah. And we adjust ourselves to the situation, I guess, which is, uh, we're lucky to be here, I would say. And the viewers who are watching, they're lucky to be watching because you know, we're here and now, and that's pretty awesome. So Emma, so wanted to ask you about your secrets for title. You've created like, I guess, hundreds or maybe thousands of listings already. Thousands. <laughs> thousands, <That's> yeah, so, <laughs> a lot uh, of listings. Uh, which is pretty awesome. And I would love to hear your stuff. So let's start, say, with the title. Maybe if we speak about title on Amazon, how can we make it more clickable? How can we make it more converting as well? What could you advise us, please? Yeah, so you hit the nail on the head with saying clickable because you want to think about what purpose each section of your listing is serving and how your customers are interacting with it. And so your title is one of those few details that people will be able to see when they are on a search results page. And so what your title is doing is it is helping customers to understand whether your product is a close match to what they're looking for. So regardless of what they're searching, they have, they have the search results pulled up and they're looking at you and they're looking at your competitors and you know, you have your main image and you have your reviews and your price and your title. That's it. Yeah. So your title plays a big part because you know, the image is rather small, so it's not going to provide that much information and the reviews will help to give a sense of whether people like or dislike a product. But the title is that thing that's saying, yes, you're going in the right direction. This is probably going to be something that you want. And so it's worth clicking in to figure out whether it matches the criteria that your customers have. Because you want to be really thinking about who your customers are and what is making them go onto Amazon or go into Google and type their search query 
and end up on that search page. And then thinking about that and understanding what are those details that they have to know when they're on the search mm. page before they're even in your listing so that they can feel confident that they're not going to be wasting extra time and effort to click in only to go back out. So for some, that could be a material. Like let's say that you are selling something and most of your competitors are plastic and yours is stainless steel. And that's something that, you know, whether people are looking for something that's stronger or longer lasting, or they have some aversion to plastic, understanding that yours is stainless steel and making that really prominent in the title is something that you want to do because not only is it help, is it helping you connect with the customers that care about that detail, but it's also differentiating yourself. Because the other thing that you really have to be aware of is it can be really frustrating as a customer to look at the search results page because everything sort of looks the same and all the titles sort of look the same and you enter into this decision fatigue as a customer really quickly where it's very challenging to even understand what is different about all these products and how to make a decision. So you're going back and forth and saying like, I don't know, like this one is 50 cents cheaper, but this one is this and, and, a lot of times what that means is that people are just left with indecision. Maybe they add a couple to cart, never get around to mm -hmm. purchasing it, get distracted by something else, get frustrated and ask their partner for advice. And it just kind of peters out. But if you can really quickly help people understand what makes you different and what makes you better mm. right away with your title, then you start setting yourself apart not just for the sake of setting yourself apart, but to begin to help make that decision easier so that customers aren't trying to compare things that are exactly the same. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And from what I understood is we need to first know the customer, right? Yes. So obviously once we're doing our customer research, market research, yes, we need to understand who we are selling to. We need to understand what they are looking for. And then once we have our title, because it's pretty much the main way of our communication with the customer that just landed on a search query on Amazon, for example, a stainless steel kitchen knife or something like this, you will see a bunch of knives. And of course, the main picture also plays a role. Yes, but it's, as you mentioned, rather small. However, the title is being read. I think most of the customers read the title. I don't have any percentages. However, it seems that a lot of them, I do at least read the titles, at least to some point of it. There's huge titles, as you mentioned, like full of features, which are kind of, you know, it's nice to have features, right? However, usually it's when it's super feature stuff. And for those who are watching, features means like, for example, something that is, how would you say, it, Emma, feature like? Uh, like all, just all those details about a product. So if you start going into, yeah. you know, it's a chef knife and a fe some features are important. Like, yes. When you were thinking of chef knife, one of the things that people may care about more than anything else, aside from the material, so whether it's a composite yeah. or stainless steel, is the length. You know, so like some people uh -huh. are looking for a 12 inch yeah. chef's knife and other yeah. people want an eight inch chef knife and other people might be looking for a chef knife set because they are just moving into their first place and they don't have any knives at all. And so they don't want to be buying, you know, having yeah. to collect them one at a time. They just want the full thing. So some of those features are important, but some of those other features like starting to go into, you know, where it's made or that it's a great gift and all those yeah. sorts of things, uh -huh, uh -huh. they may be better suited to include in the bullets or in the description. So really using your title to identify what those key main details that somebody needs to know. So they, like I mentioned earlier, they could be materials, they could be little even size mm -hmm. measurements like mm -hmm. with a knife or if it's a set, especially if you're selling a set or a multi-pack, you want to make that known fairly Clear, early yeah. on in the title because a lot of times that's going to impact your pricing. And so if I'm a customer and I'm looking mm. at, at something and I, it's not clear to me that it's a set and yours is two or three times more expensive than all of the competitors, yeah, I really. may look at that and say, well, why? <laughs> this looks the same. So making that clear from the beginning 
helps to ground why your price higher and will help people understand that it may actually even be a better deal. Something else you want to consider is that your title is actually going to get truncated or shortened. You won't see the full title yes. if you're doing a 200 character title, for example, yes. especially on mobile, but even on desktop, it gets truncated a lot. And so you want to make sure that the most important information is in the front part of your title, really within the first like 60 to 90 characters max. And of course, something that we haven't spoken about, but is also really important when you're thinking about titles is keywords. So it's not just about describing your product, but it's figuring out how to do that in a way that's also integrating those really valuable keywords that you want to make sure to be indexing for. And I sort of think about titles as almost a puzzle because there's all these different things that you're needing to fit in, in a very small amount of space. Uh -huh. And so looking at your keyword list really thoughtfully and thinking, what is a keyword that is both that I can be competitive on, that has a decent amount of search volume, and really accurately describes what my product is. So those are sort of the three things that you want to be thinking about. And then looking at the rest of your product list and or sorry, your keyword list mm -hmm. and seeing what are those other keywords that I can use to expand upon this without just repeating myself over and over again. So if your title is stainless steel chef knife set, and then you say five inch chef knife dash chef yeah. knife yeah, that's yeah you know, dishwasher safe, yeah, yeah. you don't yeah. want to do that because first of all, you're wasting valuable space by repeating the same keyword over and over again, but it's also not very customer friendly to be yeah. doing that. Uh, one more thing I wanted to add on top of what you've shared. And of course, it's usually what the copywriter does and I do my own listings as well. So I got to learn and do some course and that. There's this thing called Flash Kincaid. Is that the right name to pronounce it? Flash Kincaid like score or test. Have you heard about it? Is so it's like re re readability. Yeah, kind of readability score for titles, for sentences. Now it's AI, obviously, and it's, it's AI. So like it's not perfect. However, it can give you like sort of understanding of how readable your title is. And specifically with the Flash Kincaid, it gives you indication of which school grade does this sentence apply to? So for example, New York Post or something, yes, the, the magazine or something like this, or Washington Post, I think they have their flash Kincaid level on like grade number 10, for example. Yes, that means the words they use are a bit more hard. And as, as far as I know, Amazon and maybe things in simple copy would say, they suggested to aim for grade number seven. And so it's like, easy readable stuff. So I guess these are also can be used. I don't know if you use these as well. However, for me, it kind of helps. Uh, yeah, it's called Flash Kincaid. Maybe I'll even drop a link in the description for like such a read. It's called readable.io. Maybe it's going to help some people. But yeah, great points on the title. We're going to have no keywords. Of course, not overstuff it. We're going to know the customer. We're going to build it in a readable way because we got to get clicked. We need the clicks because then we go to the next part of the uh, listing, which is the pictures. Person clicks on our title. He sees our pictures usually. He doesn't read the bullet points straight away or maybe weird people do that. I don't want to say weird, but you know, usually people watch the pictures. So Emma, what could you tell us about like copy on the pictures? And that's something really cool. Not many people do that, but should, I think, because really eases the purchase decision. Maybe you could uh, help us with this. Yeah, I think that using text with your images together is one of the most underutilized tools that Amazon sellers have. And it doesn't matter whether you're brand registered or not. It's something that you can do very quickly. You can even do it yourself. If you have your images already, you can go to a tool like Canva and make mm -hmm. really nice looking infographics without a lot of extra effort. And what's so great about incorporating text into your images is particularly with your lifestyle images, but it can serve a variety of different functions. Let's talk about lifestyle images for a moment. Mm -hmm. And let's say that we have a picture of a beach and a couple sitting on the beach. And you see that photo without any text on it. And you start thinking, oh, maybe I need to take a trip up to you know, the Mediterranean coast soon because yeah. I haven't been to the beach in a while. And maybe I see that and I think, wow, my childhoods where we took <laughs> 
family trips to yeah. the beach were so great. And I start reminiscing. So you're thinking forward, I'm thinking backward, and probably neither of us are looking at that and thinking about the product. Yeah. But if you have a little bit of text there, then you can make sure that whether you see it or I see it or whoever else sees it, that we're all going to understand what that picture is trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. And it can be something that is really communicating and helping the customer to imagine some sort of experience. They don't all have to be talking about the product directly. It could be helping to people to really visualize this product in their lives. That's a great way to use text when it comes to lifestyle images. Um, and, and thinking about what are you really trying to show here, but also you need to make sure that you're, you're being very selective with the words that you use. So this is not giving you free range to have really text heavy images. I see people do that a lot and you want to be thinking about a few things. One, a lot of people are shopping on their phone. So if you have image that has multiple pieces of text that you're needing to zoom in, people aren't going to make that effort. And I even see a lot of images where even on the desktop, you're having to zoom in. And so that's yeah. just, you don't want to make the customer have to work more than just sure. clicking through the pictures because they're not going to, or most of them aren't most going to. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Another thing is there are some details about a product that are not so easy to describe in a clear way with text alone, but you wouldn't necessarily understand what they're trying to demonstrate by just showing a photo. So let's say that you have a some sort of special zipper. And if you just show a photo of the zipper, I don't really know what you're trying to tell me about this zipper. Mm -hmm. And if I'm just trying to explain how this zipper is so special, like in a bullet or something, it might not be so clear to me because I'm having trouble imagining this zipper within the context of the product. But suddenly when you have a photo of the product and a close up of the zipper, and then you have a little bit of text that helps explain why the zipper is so special, ideally through the lens of helping people understand why it's better than the other zippers out there or why this zipper's special design is, is going to make their experience with this product that much better, then you're really able to communicate that in a very efficient way that you'd either have to use a lot of text to do or that people would not even necessarily understand just by looking at the photos. And then the last thing is that a lot of people are going to look at your photos, they're gonna scroll down to the reviews and they may glance at the rest of the listing just to get a few more details, but they, not everybody is going to be reading through the entire listing from top to bottom. And so if there are really important benefits that you want to make sure that a customer understands or really key differentiators, re reiterate those in your pictures and, and help those people that aren't going to be looking at the rest of your listing mm -hmm. get as best of a sense of po as possible about how this product is going to fit into their lives, how it's going to solve whatever problem led them to searching on Amazon in the first place and, and making sure that it's very clear to them from the get go. Yeah, I see. So would you say it's a must to use the, I mean, well, it depends on the product. Yes. But however, would you say like, it's very, do you recommend it? So to say to most of the sellers, I would say yes. I really recommend it one because a lot of sellers aren't utilizing it. So it's a way to help differentiate yourself. Great. Two, there's really no product that wouldn't be clearer to understand through, you know, even if it's a very simple product, the text can just reaffirm those things that- Their that desires. Would, kind exactly. Of thing. Yeah. Exactly. So like <laughs> one of the examples that I was talking about recently in, in a presentation <laughs> is it's the number, well, at the time that I was preparing this presentation, it was the number one best-selling pet supply product. And it was poop bags for All right. picking up for, dogs, yeah, 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 yeah. Poop. poop. And you you may think, okay, well, how how is, you know, infographics, how is adding text to their images yeah, yeah. really going <laughs> to help set them apart? This is the number one selling pet supply on Amazon. They have over 27,000 five-star reviews. Wow. Like that crazy That's a lot. That, that many people are going online to rave about poop bags and you look at their infographics and they've done a great job so they have a picture of a, of a bag that they're holding up that's saying that it's leak proof and sturdy so that's speaking to you know a core 
benefit that is kind yeah. of like a must have if you're going to buy a product like that. Mm -hmm. And then they use some of the, their other images to show these little design improvements that they've made to such a simple product so that if I'm just flipping through and I'm like, well, why would these, why would these poop bags be like the ones that I mm. must buy? And it tells me right away. So I don't even necessarily need to read the listing because I yeah. see that they've engineered an easy lift sticker. So it's really simple to separate the first bag, which I have a dog. And a lot of times you end up ripping the first bag when you're trying to mm -hmm. open up a new roll. So that's a great little invention. They also have really easy perforations to tear one bag from the other. So that's solving another really common frustration that people have. And then it's speaking to, these are also biodegradable. So for people that are more interested in sustainability, they have the core of the rolls is made of recycled cardboard and it is recyclable. So they're really demonstrating mm -hmm. that they're committed from start to finish to making a product that's as low waste as possible. And so they're really using those images in a very thoughtful way so that you're making it easier for me as a customer. Now I don't even have to waste my time looking at anything else. I see that you have great reviews. I see that you're, that you sell really well. Mm -hmm. I see that you check all of these boxes and I feel really good now about adding this product to cart. So our goal with the pictures is to, and with all the listing, I would say, let's say with the pictures is to ease the buying decision for the customer who we know already because we spoke about before. So we want to kind of get a feeling in them like, hmm, that's for me. Oh yeah, that's me. Yeah, like this is me. Oh, that's for me. Yeah, add to cart. All right, even yes. without reading the bullet points or the description, is, let's say, yes. yes. This yep. is our big goal with the pictures. And yeah, which is pretty cool. I, I agree, I do this as well. And what I see big brands do, they use, again, depends, but they use usually like, four, five, six word infographics maybe on a picture. So really straight to the point without wasting time of people and again, simplifying everything for the customer. And that's pretty awesome. However, so let's say people read these and some people are more like techie. They're like, or maybe it's a techie product. They're like, mm, I want to see how many megahertz this computer has. So they go to the bullet points, right? Or the yeah. description. However, so they go to the bullet points. What kind of advice can you give us about bullet points to even convert more people? Kind yes. Of thing? So you're going to start to, to hear a lot of the same sorts of ideas that we've already been speaking to. So I would say first yeah. and foremost, you want to be really focused about the five most important things that a customer needs to know and limit each bullet to really focusing on one of those. So one of the most common mm -hmm. mistakes that I see people make is either just making their bullet points too long or trying to incorporate too many uh, details within one bullet. So like, you know, again, thinking about in, from the customer's perspective and the, the more time that you can spend thinking about the customer's journey in both before they even go onto Amazon, what they may be experiencing that would make them think, oh, is there a product for that? Or, oh, I need this thing, whatever mm -hmm, it is. Mm -hmm. So thinking about that and then thinking about once they get into Amazon, what are the types of things they're thinking about? What are those details that they want to know? And so if they're getting into your bullets or your description, they're starting to have a sense that this is a product that is a good fit for them. And for a lot of people, then the next step is they have certain buying criteria that they need to check before they're going to invest any more time, effort, or obviously money by buying mm -hmm. your product. So whether it's a chef's knife or whether it's a skincare item or a poop bag, we all come with certain buying criteria and you wanna make that very obvious to the customers. And so if you don't have those really focused bullet points, then it can start to get very confusing. So I really encourage people to use those all caps headers that you see people mm -hmm. doing a lot of times. And the reason that that's so great is because if you're trying to skim and find those important details, then your eyes can immediately lock on to the bullet point that is going to address that particular dimension. So mm -hmm. if it's a chef knife and the fact that you can put it into the dishwasher is really important, then the bullet point that's going to be speaking to the care of the, or you know, cleaning or whatever it is, I know that I can go there and find that. 
But if that detail is actually mixed in with a bullet point that has two or three sentences talking about the materials, and then just at the very end of that bullet, you tell me that it's dishwasher safe, I wouldn't know that I could look at that bullet to find yeah. that detail. And most of the time, I'm not going to be scanning every single word to find that. And so by hiding that information, all you're doing is sort of withholding that from a lot of people that would be excited to see that, but aren't going to necessarily expend the effort to find it. Mm -hmm. So what are those five things that somebody must know? And with your first bullet in particular, that should be focused on what is the main benefit that your product is, is giving to your customers. And thinking about benefits, you essentially are trying to identify what is this, what beyond just the function of the product, what is the problem that this product is solving? How is this product really getting to some deeper emotion within the customer and alleviating whatever that pain point may be or helping them to improve their lives in some ways? So sometimes it can take a little bit of effort to dig in and find that, but by digging in and doing that extra work, you'll write a, a listing, you'll get better photos, like, all of the efforts that you take with trying to sell your product will be much stronger than just keeping it very surface level and only talking about the you know general details of a product i see and also plus keywords we also stuff the bullets yes. with keywords on top so as you mentioned first bullet usually should talk about the kind of main benefit or maybe even the main problem a solution of this product and maybe even transformation. So if it's a kitchen knife, perhaps those who are cutting their meat, which sounds like, well, they cut meat. However, they want to make this awesome meal for their wife, for example, right? If we know that the specific product is talking about husband and wife, we can even feature them in the pictures and the bullets. So that's about understanding the customer very deeply. And then first bullet, again, talking straight to them, because usually people read the first bullet, right? For, at least because it's on top, right? That's just how it goes. And also for, you mentioned the caps for the skimmers. Some people skim, skimming means like, you know, just go through the listing kind of fast. However, the caps catch their eyes. And what I've also noticed is when you use caps, not only in the beginning of the bullet, which we kind of capitalize, yes. Mm -hmm. And then during the bullet to emphasize the words, maybe that again, are something that our customer thinking for. So maybe, you know, maybe if it's a knife, maybe sharp could be like in caps, you know, maybe it's not grammatically correct. However, schemically it might be correct. At least from my experience, it seems like, I'm not sure if you do that, however. Yeah, so we don't do that a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that it can serve a purpose. You just always want to be careful with doing that because I think a lot of times when you start doing that, you go wild and then yes, you might, every yes, few uh -huh. words you have You're shouting capitalized. Like, yeah, uh -huh. And so, you know, like you just sure. want to be really thoughtful if you're using that technique because I think it can serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. I, you also want to be thinking about the space that you're selling within. So True. let's say that you're selling a product that is a baby product for new parents and it's for parents that are millennial parents that are very concerned about, you know, safety for their children and scientifically proven stuff. You know, they're, they're not interested in, in the passed down yeah. technique the, uh -huh. from one generation to the next. They want to see the, the scientific evidence for why it's best yeah. to parent in this way. So for people like that, using overcapitalization uh -huh. may come across as being less reliable or kind of cheaper than uh -huh. what they may be looking for. Whereas if you have something that's more of a fun product that uh -huh. is high energy, then using some of those ha mm -hmm. those capitalization techniques could be really beneficial. So once again, it's all about really being clear about who your customers are and understanding the way that they want to be marketed to and sold to and spoken to and making sure that there's a match there. I see. And Emma, what do you think about emojis in the bullets? Do you think it's something that really, do you see any changes throughout the listing you've created? Do you use emojis sometimes? Or again, depends on the... I hate emojis. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I know that I'll, I know that people like them. I just think like, and I, I I ask other people this all the time, just from a customer perspective. I think they cheapen. 
the product. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they really do anything to make to elicit any like other yeah. type of emotion. And I just think that if you take yourself seriously as a brand, then using emojis isn't really, you know, again, yeah. I'm sure there are products that a couple of well-used emojis could, could be, you know, fun, but I have a hard time figuring out what, what those products are. Cause also like, you know, I even, I, I was just asking yeah. one of our team members who she's in her early twenties and you would think that she would be the one that would be most sort of persuaded by emojis. And just, she, yeah. like, she was saying, when I go on to Amazon and I see a listing with emojis, I immediately click out. So yeah. if her demographic isn't feeling particularly excited by them, I'm taking that as good evidence that maybe your character count could be used better in other ways. And speaking of that, it is worth noting, more is not better with your bullets. So even if you're allowed up to 500 characters per bullet, there's no reason that you should be making them that long. If you've ever seen a listing that's using bullets that long, there are huge yeah, chunks it looks, of yeah. text. It's really not very customer friendly. No. Nobody's going to make the effort to read it. And so you're just wasting precious space. Even if you know, you're packing it full of keywords, it doesn't really matter because you can have all the keywords that you need, but if your listing is not set up to convince customers that your product is the one for them, then you're not going to rank in the way that you need to in order to really be having a successful business on Amazon. I see. So generally your advice is bullets that are straight to the point and yeah, straight to the point is like a term that can be, you know, however short, generally shorter bullets that emphasize one point of whatever customer wants to hear. And we have five of them of the bullets usually. So we fill each of them and yeah, I guess. And emojis, as you mentioned, you haven't seen any changes and some people react negatively to them, which is a thing to think about because many people add emojis. So it might not be good, but it's not a game changer anyhow. All right. Do you, I see. Do that, you yeah. use emojis? Yeah, I wanted to, I, I use emojis. I like in the, if it's a description, if it's not a plus content in the description, I have like call to action, which we can also speak about the, near the call to action. For example, you know, like go click add to cart now, something like this, and they're going to be like green ticks or something. So it might be eye catching on the call to action. Again, I can't really say like, all right, this changed the game on Amazon, but I do that and uh, you know, conversions are fine. However, yeah, that's how I use emojis in bullet points. I also sometimes did like five green ticks. But usually I don't use emojis, yes. That's what yeah. I would say. And so yeah, five bullets as I mentioned, right? So say the person reads the bullets, is like, right, pretty convincing. Like, however, I want to see more. He scrolls down in, at least on desktop. On mobile yeah. these days, bullets are under the description. So Yep, correct. So say we're on desktop, right? They, they scroll down and see the description, right? We have description. We also discuss A plus content, but description. What is, how do you build? Is it the story? Is it more features? Is it, what's the flow there usually? What do you think is best? I think the description is one of the unsung heroes of an Amazon listing. Part of what you mentioned, because on mobile, this is appearing before your bullets. Before, yes. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of people in their minds assume oh, the description is so far down. Who, if anybody's scrolling that far, it's because they're just going to go straight to the reviews. They're not reading the description. Well, we see that since it's not, not appearing so prominently on mobile, that you can't make that assumption. So mm -hmm. your description needs to serve a few different purposes. But one of the things that I really love about the description is that you're in control of how you present the information. So with your bullets, you have to organize your information within a way that fits the bullet format. So let's say that you wanted to talk about how great your ingredients are in one of your bullets. It's not really presented in that customer friendly of a way to start describing what all of your ingredients are in your bullet points. You might do it, but it doesn't have that same impact. And especially if you want to get into some of the benefits of each of those ingredients, whether it's skincare or a supplement or, you know, even 
some other type of thing that would have, you know, a food item. Right. Whereas in the description, you can use basic HTML tags. So you're in control of how you're presenting that information mm. and how it's organized. So you can use bolding, you can use line breaks, and you can use bullets to help to format all of that in a way that makes sense for your product. Let's say that you're selling a product that has a bunch of different pieces in it. Again, making a short bulleted list makes it really clear to customers exactly what comes in it. Whereas if it's all scrunched together in a bullet point, it can be a little bit difficult to wrap your mind around everything that comes in it. So thinking about really how can you best utilize that space to make those sorts of things very easy for the customer. And I also like to incorporate some storytelling into this because since we can control how you, we format things, you can also start to think beyond just the product functionality even more so and really thinking about what is that situation that somebody found themselves in that you want to relate to around the, this pain point that they have or what is this future that you want to help them imagine once they have this product? Or if you have a compelling brand story, even incorporating that a little bit into things so that you're beginning to expand the conversation beyond just the product itself, but really starting to develop a deeper relationship with your customer. And so you can be doing all of these things simultaneously with making it really easy to understand exactly what your product is, what comes with it, and everything that, that you need to know. And I would say those most important details, it's okay to ha even have a little bit of repetition between the description, the bullets, and even the photos, because then no matter what point somebody mm. is starting at, they'll be able to find those details, but you don't want to go to the extreme of just copy and pasting exactly what's there. Even if you are speaking about something, you know, like, like we mentioned the first bullet point, really speaking to that core benefit of a product. So you can speak to that same core benefit of the description, but maybe from a different perspective or with some different types of marketing techniques than just mm -hmm. saying exactly what you'd said before. So, yeah. yeah. yeah I, so the, the top of the description essentially is like the first bullet point in a way, like we want to emphasize the, if it's, if we're again going to be talking about this main benefit or the main transformation, we can start a description from this. It's an option. Or we can, as I mentioned, like start it with a story. Like, for example, our brand is like, I don't know, Earth Planet. <laughs> can I come up with a brand name? I know, uh, I'm like, always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never have yeah. a, I never have the good examples locked and loaded whenever yeah, yeah. I'm ha whenever I'm so speaking. Like... Yeah. So like, but you know, even let's, let's go to, to the poop bags that we were talking about. Yeah, you know, right. Not talk poop bags. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> The, that brand in their description, which they are, like I said, they have their best-selling pet product. Yeah. They have over 27,000 reviews. They don't have A-plus content. Mm. They just have a regular description. Mm -hmm. And in their description, they talk about how, you know, their pet owners and some of the frustrations that they were experiencing. Mm. And so, you know, they're, they're taking Excellent. that approach. Mm -hmm. And I see that work really well for a lot of businesses. So speaking to some of those bigger ideas while at the same time helping people to understand why this product and you as a business are things that they should feel really excited about. So like I would feel much more confident in trusting, you know, pet owners that understand all of the sort of frustrations around this less than pleasant chore than some big company that just sees another opportunity to expand their product line, but maybe doesn't really understand some of those smaller little pain points that I'm experiencing on a daily basis. So your description can be a great place to, to do that. And it's much more difficult to do some of those types of things in, let's say a bullet point or, or a photo, obviously your title. I see. And Emma, what about call to actions in bullets, in descriptions, in titles maybe as well? What, what yes. Do you think? So I'm a fan of using a call to action in the description, not in your A plus content. You need to be, when we're yeah. talking, there is a differentiation because the A plus content, there are more rules about what That's you true. can and cannot say. 
But in your regular description, I think that a call to action, it, there is no harm in doing it. And I haven't tested it as much as I probably should have, but I think that if you, especially if you do it skillfully, which is utilizing that call to action while simultaneously reaffirming that key benefit. So helping, mm -hmm. you know, to summarize everything. So you, you know, you talked about these great things in your bullets and you've talked about all this stuff in your description. And then you have that one final opportunity to emphasize everything that you spoke about, you summarize it all clearly, and then give people a little bit of that positive momentum so that they just, you know, don't hesitate and they, and they click add to cart. And I, I think that it's something that it's relatively simple to do and it can, it can be a beneficial thing worth doing. I see. I would also add a little tip, maybe again for the viewers, I like to use social proof. So for example, if I know that I sold over 10,000 products on Amazon, I could use the words like trusted by over 10,000 customers, you know, like, or maybe if my product was featured on a website, that's very big in my niche. For example, if I am selling a cooking product and you know, there's a blog moms cook together, then I would say as seen on moms cook together blog. So or CNN, for example, if you got featured on some huge website or something, it can also social proof can always, it's like the, the reviews, the social proof, right? Or we can add some social proof, I guess, if you have social proof for your product. So if you've gained some social proof, add it, and it seems to be also giving good conversions, at least from what I've seen. Yeah. And that's also something to think about as you're creating the text for your photos. Mm. That's if you have those types of things, you know, adding some little badges of yeah, as yeah. seen on this mm -hmm. and whatnot can, can be really worth considering if you, if you have those kinds of credentials behind, behind your product. I see Emma and say, all right, do a description right now. I mean, maybe the viewers that are watching, they know that we can, if we are brand registered on Amazon, we can use A plus content. And this is, used to be called EVC, enhanced brand content. Today we call it A plus content. And essentially A plus content is the same description. However, you can add pictures. You can even add links to your products there. There are more rules to that. However, it gives you maybe more room to play with and more pictures. And so maybe you have some tips for this, for A plus content. Yeah, A plus content is great for a variety of reasons. One is we already spoke about, which is this idea of utilizing the power of images and text together. Mm -hmm. And so your A plus content is almost like a little mini website or landing page right with, mm -hmm. within your Amazon listing. And so it can be a really interesting space to do a lot of different things. So there's not necessarily only one way to use this space effectively. And you want to be thinking about it from the perspective of your brand and your product and understanding what makes the most sense for your goals. So I've seen really great examples. For example, there's a very successful e-commerce coffee company called Black Rifle Coffee Company. And they use their A-plus content to really speak to their brand. So they have, you know, pictures of their whole team and a, a short letter from their founder and sections that talk about their mission and their values. And just nice. one module is committed to speaking about the coffee itself. Yes. And they have such a compelling story as a brand that that's what's helping them to sell their product. It's also helping them to command a significantly higher price point than a lot of their other competitors, which when you figure out that branding piece, that's one of the really awesome things that can happen is you can start to separate the decision from purely being one about what's the cheapest. Yes. Um, so they've done a great job of that, but there could also be examples of products that you start to understand on a much deeper level when you're able to kind of walk through 
the journey of all of the different uses. Like, let's say that you're selling a security camera. And so you're showing all of the different ways that this security mm -hmm. camera can be used. But also you may have a lot of technical details that could be kind of difficult for your customers to wrap their minds around, particularly if they're not super tech savvy people. And so helping to really simplify that by having great images that communicate what some of those things mean and then the text to help support that or provide supplementary information for the people that are a little bit more comfortable with tech. Another really awesome thing that you can do within the A plus content and it's one of my favorites is there's a comparison chart module. So if you have other products in your line, this is a great way to cross promote your products. And it's I think that it does best in two in two ways. One is let's say that you have a lot of products that are really similar to each other. So let's say let's go back to the chef's knives and maybe you have uh, a few different tiers of chef's knives. So you have more of the entry level chef knife all the way to a pretty expensive professional chef knife and the prices reflect that as well. But as a customer, it may be a little bit confusing and difficult for me to compare those side by side beyond price. Mm -hmm. And so with a comparison chart, you can make that, you can really break that down and make it very simple for me to understand, okay, what, what is great about this entry level one? What is great about this middle mid-level one and this professional one? And so then I can start to get a sense of, okay, you know what? It is worth it to me to spend $50 more to get the mid-level one because I want this to last for 10 years instead of three years, or I don't want to have to sharpen my knife as frequently. And this one has some specially honed blade that stays sharp longer. Mm -hmm. So you help make that clearer in a, in a way that's very easy for your customers versus having to click back and forth between a bunch of different windows. And mm -hmm. then they're comparing only your knives. So you're not having to be compared against your competitors. You're just comparing them against yourself. So that's great. And then another way that it can be used really well is if you have just some other standout products in your line, particularly if they could be in some way complementary mm -hmm. to the product. So that can be a great way to actually do, you know, an upsell of, oh, you're looking for chef's knives. We have a cutting board. We have a sharpener. We have a, you know, a, a knife, a really sleek looking knife holder that fits yeah. into your drawer. And so then... <laughs> It's there a way it. of <laughs> <laughs> the coffee thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so uh, it's it, it's a it's a great it's a great little module that is. I'm surprised that it's not used as often as it does. And honestly, a lot of times when I see businesses use it, they're not using it very skillfully. So like they'll just have three of them on top of each other. And I'll be like, uh -huh. look at all of our, like I was, I was shopping for yoga pants recently and it was like, here's all of our yoga pants in all of these colors, but we're not providing you any context for what's different about yeah. these. And it's like three rows of it. And so I'm just looking at it. I'm feeling confused. I'm feeling overwhelmed. And then I'm just probably not even going to buy my yoga pants on Amazon because I feel mm. like, I don't know if these are actually the quality that I want. And I know the ones that I like from a different brand. And I'm just going to go that direction. Yeah, Emma, you mentioned the word feel. And a lot of this is connected to all we talk about is making the customer feel comfortable throughout browsing listing, which might sound weird to people watching. However, think about it. Like you're on your phone and you have crisp pictures with exactly what you're looking for. Your dopamine gets, you get a dopamine rush. It's like a little drug. You know, these websites are built as little drugs. They're like little drug dealers, same as YouTube, as Amazon. They know what you want, right? And we as sellers, if we kind of deal right, we can, insanely make a person happy right and it's it's what we they need right it's not that we're using some sort of you know we just want to make them happy right so if we when we make them feel happy throughout the browsing our listings they're more likely to buy and to sum up the a plus content part so it's good for story as you mentioned extra pictures obviously to tell more about your product if it's a more techie product or just you want to emphasize more features it's you can definitely add it there also going to say that, you know, we can provoke emotions and then close on a logical basis with customers in different fields, maybe on Amazon as well. Yes. So that's nice. And we can also cross promote products. As you mentioned, we can add 
inside the, the technique, I won't go into that, but you add other products. However, don't just throw in products, add something compelling. It's just like a knife and add a sharpener if you have such. And it's also going to help the algorithm kind of suggest your products to your own products in a way. So it's also good for the SEO kind of thing on Amazon, if you, if I could say, because they're going to be you know, clicked around and we take more space from our competitors that are advertising on our listings because we have more products, more real estate. And yeah, we can tell a story there and generally it's more information, the A plus content to, I guess, close the deal. And there are more rules for this as well. So you need to know the rules. Amazon states, you just read the rules. It's nothing, but you can really use call to actions there. As far as I know, you can use like the word free, the word now, you need to be kind of yeah, careful with this. Um, yeah, guarantee. Even warranty. things like environmentally friendly, a lot of those sort of green yeah. types of words you need to be very careful with. I would say definitely familiarize yourself with what you can and cannot say just as a whole, because even beyond A plus content, yeah. there, there are words that can the algorithm will flag and yeah, it will be yeah. a, stressful at the very least, and very time consuming and potentially quite expensive to yeah, try to remedy it. Safe, so yeah. better to be as careful and as thorough as you can be on the front end than to have to deal with a huge mess because you were trying to get away with something that Amazon knows yeah. that you may try to get away with and yeah, doesn't yeah. want to let you do. So That's right. And one more thing is uh, for also for the it was is that once you submit it, if you have some specific words, Amazon will tell you straight away. Like it, it, it's like two years ago when we only got introduced to ABC or even more that was 2017, I remember. And it would check it and then get back to you. Now these days, if you have some words they know that are not correct, they will tell you straight away, ah, you have like free word remove, right? So that's yeah. nice. However, still, as you mentioned, just be aware of your language. Usually if you have a good copywriter, they will be aware. And if you're doing your own copy, which I really don't recommend if you don't know how to do copy, because it can be worse than even not having bullet points once you write them down with spelling mistakes and it can really lower down the perceived value of your listing and people will click away. So yeah, that's so we're speaking about A plus content. So yeah, we got it through title, bullets, description, ABC, we're say plus content. We spoke about text on images. First, really, thank you for this, for your time. I think the viewers are excited to know this. It's, it's good stuff. This will help people to get more sales and just create better listings. And Emma, I wanted to ask you a question about your entrepreneurship journey. I've mentioned before that I met you like three years ago, plus even three years ago uh, with a few weeks. And you're still hustling, which I really respect. Because as I mentioned to you before, many people that I know, they, you know, sellers, service providers, as I mentioned, gurus, you know, some people just quit the game and you don't, you don't. So what keeps you in the game as an entrepreneur? Like what really, like why? How, how, what holds you in this like kind of thing? That's a great question. I think I'm actually hustling harder than I ever have, to be perfectly honest. And so <laughs> I, I think a lot of people that get into entrepreneurship, they feel like they had this calling their whole lives. You know, they were, they were like, yes, yeah. when I was five, I was selling candy bars to my neighbors. I was not that person. I was sort of a late bloomer when it comes to entrepreneurship. Uh -huh. But I think that once I discovered it, I understand that it was what I was always supposed to find because I was also one of those employees, which after a few months, I would start to get really bored and I would get frustrated because I didn't want to hear how I could do all these things better. And as since it's my business, I can just do those things. And I love, I just also, I, I, I think in some ways I enjoy the challenge more than the ease. So like, and my, my husband, Ares, who's also my business partner, he's always like, you know, you spend so little time celebrating the wins, but you really know how to dig into the challenges. And I think from the outside, maybe it seems like I'm just spending most of my life incredibly unhappy, but I, I don't think that's the case at all. I just really love figuring things out. And so even if I seem frustrated from the outside, I like that mental challenge of uh -huh. needing to keep figuring out what to do until you're able to push through whatever that thing that's blocking you is. So that's, that's why I'm probably working even harder now and why I definitely don't have any intentions of slowing down. That's good. I wish you to continue, you know, with whatever you're enjoying, you know, because one might enjoy 
this or that, one might say, well, this makes me happy. Whatever makes you happy, Emma. And I think that's awesome because really you're, you're, you're hustling a lot more than before because I think you want it. Yes. I, I, I wouldn't say I think. It seems so. I, guess. <laughs> I mean, it's it, what it is, right? <laughs> and, yeah. I, yeah. I, I really love what we do. I feel really excited about the quality that we're providing. Like I've always felt like we provided great quality. And I love that with every, you know, as the time passes, we just get better. So our, you know, our systems are better. So it makes a more seamless experience for the customer and our, we're constantly educating ourselves about the latest, you know, marketing techniques and how to better weave in different psychological principles into what you're doing. And so that constant thirst for knowledge and curi- and that curiosity sort of like just feeds the momentum of everything. Yeah. And as, as I mentioned before, I wish you to continue being in this, in this flow of creation, of fun, of getting your business bigger as well, your relationships better. And I think that's, that's just fun. You know, life is short eventually. So if we do whatever we want to do, create our things that we want to do, help other people improve their lives, I think we did something right in this life in a way. And Emma, so you mentioned also about your agency. Now, we're going to have the link to your agency down in the description. It's going to be an affiliate link. It means that if the viewers ever would like to purchase anything from you, I will get a little commission from this. This is called affiliate marketing. Now, what kind of maybe offers would you have for the viewers that you could help my viewers or people searching on YouTube with your services, something like this, if there's yeah. an option? Yes, I have a couple of different things. First of all, I would love to offer everybody a two free photo text for with any Amazon listing optimization purchase. So what we were speaking about earlier with figuring out how to think of that really strong, compelling text and what to add into your images, Mm -hmm. that's that. So the the coupon code is VOVA, V-O-V-A, and then there will also be a link and (laughs) information down below. And then additionally, we offer free listing analysis. So I know that, you know, when you're, when, especially if you're doing your own, but even if you've hired somebody else or you have somebody on your team that's doing it, it can be really difficult to make sure that your listing checks all the boxes. So maybe it's great on an SEO side, but that's only one piece of the puzzle. It's not really something we spoke about that much, but you know, the SEO is what's helping to generate that traffic and make make sure that you're getting eyeballs on Mm -hmm. your listing. But that only takes you so far. And so then the next piece is really making sure that it's optimized to make a sale. Yes, yes. Uh exactly. And so you need the, you need that strong SEO skeleton and then you need all of these other details that go on top of it, you know, like the the flesh and the clothing and the makeup or whatever accessories that it might be so that there's a really full picture of your product that people are super excited to buy. And so because it can be so difficult to make sure that all of those boxes are checked, we also offer a free listing analysis. So if you go through the link down below, (laughs) it'll take you there and just fill out a simple form and we'll get back to you with some feedback about things that you may want to consider doing. And then of course, if you don't want to be the one to do that, or you just want to skip all of that and you want our help, we're, we're happy to help you optimize your listings. If you're looking to expand beyond Amazon and are starting to think about having your own website or Shopify or something like that, we can help you with that, that text as well. And we would be delighted to do so. Perfect. Emma, thank you for sharing these kind of promotions with my audience here because people are hungry for knowledge, have hungry for more sales, for better listings. So it's going to be very nice for them to take advantage of the stuff. So I do recommend and thank you for coming as well for your time and Hopefully, you know, you enjoyed as well the time we spent together here and I did really enjoy and I would like to see you here again in the future. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, I would love to. <laughs> I uh, I love nerding out about this stuff and you're awesome, Bova. So I hope that people get tons of value out of this and I'd love to come back and talk more. We can talk about customer avatars or really digging into branding. There's a lot of good meaty topics that I'd be happy to sink my teeth in with you. Perfect. So if we ever do more videos, 
up here on the screen, we're going to have like a link to the next video with Emma. It's like, it's called end screen on YouTube. I'll take care of that. And yeah, hopefully we could be, could meet again here on the channel. Thank you for coming. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye Emma. Thank you.